your broadcast with Doc Cheatham, Jade Wendell Gordon, the warrior lawyer, and attorney Ken Ravenel. Coming to you live from the Kathy Hughes studio at WOLB 1010 AM. I'm your humble host, Marvin Doc Cheatham, former Baltimore City local president of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. NAACP and the National Excellent Network. This broadcast is brought to you every Thursday to discuss pursuits of liberty, justice, and equality locally, regionally, and nationally. Further, to educate and excite you to the extent that former Congressman John Lewis would say, Phi Beta Sigma Man, let's get in good trouble. You heard me right. Let's get in good trouble. Our calling phone number is 410-481-1010. 410-481-1010. And or toll free, 1-877-704-1010. Toll free, 1-877-704-1010. We're streaming live, WOLB. Dot com WOLB Baltimore I'm sc- I'm sorry WOLB Baltimore dot com uh, let me say this uh, I'm gonna come out early with the issue dealing with the food market because we're going to also discuss a very interesting topic and that is health as it relates to the Baltimore City school system so we're going to kind of do some juggling. I'm hoping either Ken or the warrior lawyer will call in as well. So we're going to juggle three subject matters at the same time. Let me say this. On Wednesday, October the 6th, please write it down. Wednesday, October the 6th, we're going to have a rally for the food market support. We're going to do it on behalf in a positive way. This is not a negative rally. This is a positive rally. Uh, And we're going to encourage the support of Transamerica, one of the world's largest insurance companies, and we're going to ask for other business support. It's going to happen on one day, but two different times. Next Wednesday, which is Fannie Lou Hammond's birthday, October the 6th, we're going to have one rally at 12 noon, from 12 until 1 p.m., only one hour. It's going to be at 100 Light Street. 100 Light Street. Light Street is the same as St. Paul, but when you cross over to Baltimore Street, it becomes Light Street. It's also uh, the cross the street is Lombard. Uh, zip code is 21201. Then at 4 p.m., for those who can't make the 12 o'clock rally, we're going to have a rally, uh, and we're encouraging the residents, not only of Sandtown, but of zip code 21217, 21216, and 21223. We're asking for neighborhood support. We're going to be at the Eastwood Sandtown Park and Playground. No, I'm not talking about the Eastwood Park up on Bedlow Street. I'm talking about the Eastwood Sandtown Park and Playground in the 1500 block of McKean. Uh, the block is the 1500 block from 1515 to 1557. The Matthew Henson Neighborhood Association, four and a half years ago, built a park. Uh, and we're going to have our rally. We're asking everyone to come. We're asking folks definitely from the different zip codes to come to uh, actually come and speak. Uh, That, of course, again, would be 4 to 6 p.m. Zip code is 21217. We're asking for your support. We're asking for support to bring a food market back to 21217, 21216, and 21223, positively impacting on all residents, but especially the residents living in some buildings that are nearby. 
the Curry House, the Gilmore House, Harlem Gardens, Harvey Johnson Towers, Lawrence House, Rosemont Towers, and the Winchester Sandtown Senior Center. These are all locations that once had a food market near them, but now it does not. So we're asking you to be supportive of these events. I want to bring up, if we could, uh, the writer of the Afro has written some magnanimous informational articles on food deserts, and I'd like to bring him up early, and if he can stay on, to let him stay on in case we get uh, some questions. So, uh, Yeah, hi, Doc. It's Peter Settler, PK. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Um, thanks for having me on the show. Um, no, no. Thank you for being on the show. <laughs> So um, I've been part of the Afro series on doing a whole uh, series of stories addressing the food deserts and solutions. And I mean, you know, looking at the solutions is sponsored by um, uh, Solutions Journalism. And we've been looking at all the different issues. And one of the good news came out is the FDIC, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, uh, chairwoman uh, Yelena McWilliams has created a what she called a shark tank shark tank fund for investment mission bank uh, driven investments in the in our communities and you know Baltimore like West Baltimore and one of the projects that you know was raised was you know what you were doing is you know making a giant or Safeway or Aldi Little supermarket there in Matthew Henson you know in that sound town Easterwood. And this fund is already $120 million. It can be leveraged, it's already leveraged up to a billion dollars. And all you have to, and it's only gonna be through minority ba owned banks like the Harbor Bank of Maryland or Industrial Bank, these, these banks. And um, that's the good news. And it's all gonna be privately funded. So you don't have to go to the mayor or the governor or who, who what's or what's to get it funded. And it, it's quite transformational and revolutionary. It's great news. So, uh, folks, we not only have uh, some great articles written about this, uh, we have some exciting uh, projects uh, next Wednesday, one from 12 to 1 o'clock p.m., and then another one from 4 to 6. Uh, but we also have some very exciting and knowledgeable, uh, I guess, uh, citizens. I don't want to give them too big of a, a flaw. Uh, but we have some great knowledgeable citizens. One of them happens to be Bubby. Uh, he's a resident of Sandtown. Uh, he knows the plight that we have and many of us have. He's the one that added the two other buildings that I had neglected to put on the list. So, Bubby, are you there? Hey, what you thank you so much. I'm here with you. Thank you so much, Dr. Tatum, for all you do. Well, uh, I want, want to let folks know that I've asked uh, Bubby, including uh, uh, six other folks, I'm calling these folks the Magnificent Seven, I've asked them to come on and serve in an advisory capacity uh, with the Matthew Henson Community Development Corporation, specifically for this project to try to bring a food market back to 21217, the 21216, and the 21223. So I want to give you all a little bit of information. Uh, we're also going to have a subject matter dealing with health. But I want to start on, on a national issue that I was uh, dealing with yesterday. I had the pleasure of uh, being with Sharon Black and many folks uh, dealing with the rally. And this is dealing with the Haitian uh, injustice that has taken place. And I basically made this uh, message uh, during my brief talk uh, in front of the City Hall of Baltimore City yesterday. Quote, the U.S. and the European repeated invasion, decimation of Haiti, and the deliberate abrasion of the indigenous Haitian leadership is truly a painful and shameful reminder of black American people's inexcusable indifference and collective unresponsiveness to the suffering, harm, and death exacted against our people 
you out to the score. Matthew hits the Neighborhood Association doors the outcry of this racist treatment of Haitian refugees. President Biden, Paul, your racist border patrol, and stop the whippings and racist deportations now. We demand immediate hire, firing and prosecution of all those responsible. Provide permanent shelter and health care, including COVID-19 vaccinations, to all of the arrivals at the border. And my closing was, in the use of Title 42, to deny humane immigration policies and its racist and selective use of justifying the denial for the majority of non-European people. Reparations, not deportation. This is our national commentary. Uh, we also have, uh, I would consider to be uh, the local commentary, and of course that was dealing with the food market, but uh, I actually heard this, so I have a response dealing with local elections, the gubernatorial election that's coming up. How is it that the state senator and delegate of the 40th Maryland Legislative District and the councilman representing the separate city council district purportedly have already endorsed a Maryland gubernatorial candidate? And there is no dialogue with the constituents, better known as voters, that they support supposedly represent. Wow. Things that make you say, quote, as Michael Jackson would say, they don't really care about us. And let, me, let me bring it to you again. We have elected officials that have already endorsed, purportedly, a candidate for Maryland governor and they have not discussed it at all unless, unless I was in the wrong place for the last few months or weeks. Uh, they have not discussed it with the people that they represent. And I'm talking about the senator and the delegates for the 40th legislative district. I'm talking about the city councilman for the 7th district. During the Larry Young Morning Show, a candidate for governor indicated, so that's why I say alleged purportedly, indicated that these elected officials have already endorsed this candidacy. And there's nothing wrong with that, but I'm saying if you represent a constituency, don't you think you should have had uh, some kind of discussion with some of them? On what basis are you going to endorse them and you don't know what the feelings are of the people that you actually represent? So, uh, I'm going wow. to go back. Uh, I think that is somewhat appalling, uh, to say the least, uh, this early in the campaign. Uh, I'm not questioning the candidate, very viable candidate. I'm just saying, uh, don't our elected officials represent us? Don't they think they should talk to us? Or do they think that the only thing they got to go is do is go to Pinnor and do some photo shots and act like they're cleaning up the neighborhood when 95% of the rest of the city uh, where they represent looks like a garbage stuff because we are not getting our trash clean. But you do these photo ops uh, everywhere. Wow. I don't understand it. Bubba, you got any comments on that? Well, well Dr. Cheatham, you have taught me it's best to call names. When we say talk about our 7th District and our City Councilman, it is Jane Torrance. And I have personally seen him at Penn North at least four times clean up and have not seen him in the rest of the part of Sandtown or the 21217. But, Doc, it is shameful for these politicians to endorse anybody without the community input and who the community would at least have input in giving them what issues they would like to address. Doc, you know we have been saying for decades that we have the worst elected public officials that represent the 21217 in the history. And my question is, why do these politicals who come through this 7th district always get promoted to the next position? Is it because they doing someone else bidding against the people in 21217? 
Well, Bobby, I, I, I would say, uh, yes, I've been one of those uh, who basically say it's hard for me to remember everything that I say or do. So one, I try not to lie because you tell one lie, you got to tell another one. And it's easier to call names rather than people assume who you're talking about. Well, I'm talking about uh, the 40th District State Senator, Maryland State Senator Antonio Hayes. I'm talking about the three delegates in the 40th District, Delegate Marion Amprey, Delegate Frank Conaway Jr., and Delegate Melissa Wells. All we're wow. saying is that if you have, as it has been alleged and purported, that you've already endorsed a gubernatorial candidate, when were you going to discuss that with us? But uh, we're not going to hold out with that one person. We're going to mention the name of the councilman uh, of the seven council district. His name was mentioned uh, on the radio show that we heard the uh, the alleged uh, support uh, of, count, of Councilman James Torrance. Uh, and he represents the seventh city council district. And all we're saying for all these senators, delegates, uh, council people, uh, if you are the elected official and you represent a certain constituency, it seems like you would have some kind of discussion with the people you represent uh, as to what their feelings are, what their concerns are, what they would like to have. Uh, you know, if you, of course, made the endorsement, uh, not using your uh, official title, then I would have to say I could be corrected uh, that uh, maybe there's no no real issue. But the way that it was pronounced on a radio show, your name and title were given. So that means you're doing it or allegedly doing it uh, under the skies of being an elected uh, representative who has a constituency that he, should, he or she should answer to. We're also going to discuss today, if I'm able to get one of our special callers to call in, uh, we want to discuss education as it specifically relates to health and safety. Mm -hmm. We want to market uh, back into our area uh, because many of our school kids, 25% of our parents and children live in a food desert and if you're expecting kids to do well in school should they not have proper nourishment and if all they can eat is the potatoes is impressive they're all not vegetarians they eat other things other than vegetables and we're just saying that we need help it looks like i may have a caller because i don't want folks to miss the idea and the notion that we need people to get actively involved. There is a good likelihood that funds are going to come to our city and other cities uh, that are having economic problems and trying to bring services to their community. We're trying to get a food market back uh, to 21217, 21216, and 21223 uh, in the Monroe Street area to accommodate these folks. Peter, are you still with us? Yeah, I am, Doc. How are you doing? Yeah. Peter, Peter, please explain to us the great idea of this uh, picketing. I don't know whether I want to call it a picket or a rally, but it's in a positive sense. It's not a negative sense. It's a positive, uplifting uh, initiative. I mean... Yeah, I mean, the idea is Transamerica is a, one of the biggest financial conglomerates in the world. They're based out of Ega. They're based out of Amsterdam in Holland. Um, they're the, one of the largest asset managers. The, you know, you see that skyscraper up there by Inner, Inner Harbor. And they invest in companies like Giant uh, that's owned by the Dutch also. It's part of the A-hole group Safeway. You got others. And, you know... And it's in the whole thing of the Shark Tank the FDIC fund is, you know, investing in the communities. And it's also good investment. Um, you know, these supermarkets in our inner city, in the urban areas are quite profitable. You know, they don't lose money. They make money because in West Baltimore, if you only have one, you have shoppers down the road. And, you know, that was say because COVID made so much profit that they were about to shut it down and now they're going to keep it open. But there's no promises of how long they'll keep it open.
But yeah, you know, I see it in DC. Um, JP Morgan CEO just was um, opening a new bank branch in DC next to a Safeway in the Skyland Hillcrest area. They have one in in Hillcrest in um, Cherry Hill in Baltimore, and they're going to open up another bank. So everybody is, is investing in the city, and so this makes perfect sense. And you know, showing people like Transamerica that they're welcome to the city, and they should be looking at West and East Baltimore and the residents there. It makes perfect sense. Yeah. 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 Yes. Go ahead, Sandra. May I say something to what's that? Yes, they have they have opened up in Cherry Hill and the shopping center that they're trying to renew. But right right in that shopping center, they closed the supermarket down. Yeah, yeah, and that's 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 sad. When I went and visited them, I, I was in disbelief. I could not believe. How could you have a small area? It's almost like an island in Cherry Hill. You know, these folks had no other food market. Uh, in the area, which means they got to go into Tapsico or other areas back in the city area because they have no food market there. How dare the city do that? And, you know, I put blame and responsibility on all of our elected officials uh, that are not addressing this issue. And I said, well, folks, I call names. I'm not good at trying to memorize everybody. So I, I, I call names of people. You know, I tell, tell the neighbors uh, in our community, who the people are? Well, you talk about two U.S. senators. You talk about Card and Van Allen. You talk about a congressman. You talk about Congressman Quiet uh, uh, Sam Fumic. You talk about the mayor Brandon Scott. You talking about Bill Henry, the controller. You talking about Nick Mosby, uh, the president of the city council. You talk about our city councilman. James Torrance, you're talking about our state senator, Antonio Hayes, and you're talking about the three delegates. These are elected representatives and haven't done a damn thing about us getting a food market. All them out, All them out. Discussing whether it's a quarter of a mile or a mile. I don't give a damn whether it's a quarter of a mile or a hundred miles away. If there's no food market, there's no food market. All them out, God. Call the world. Uh, um, Dada, um, I have, um, um, the, the thing is, my grandmother still lives in Cherry Hill, and I'm from Cherry Hill. Now, when we did have a supermarket up in Cherry Hill, we also had these little things called buses that, that was in the community for the people who could not get to the shopping center to, um, to, um, to, 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 to get their little, little, little groceries or, you know, their little snacks or whatever. Now, the problem that I have is, is that when... When the supermarkets came and they started complaining that, you know, these buses were taking money away from them. So they closed down the buses. They closed down that access point. And two, now I have a problem with, we, we have to see things for what it is. Redlining is real in our city. And they have been trying to turn Cherry Hill into the county, back into the county. But you got, you got the, the, the hospital down there. You have four That's companies right. down there. And they got prime real estate areas. What they're gonna That's do right. is they're either gonna starve these people out. That's right. Or they're going to have and gentrification come in and they can still have Cherry Hill for what it is. It's There's too close to downtown. For Cherry Hill and it does not include poor and black people. Uh, well, I can tell you one for certain two for sure. Right, but I can tell you one for certain two for sure. I told them you cannot have my grandmother's house over my dead body. That's right, right. my grandmother's house because what they're trying to do is they're trying to scare older citizens into selling their house. And that's, that's right. right. And I went to that meeting and I told them, me and my sister, we told them, over our dead body, you will get my grandma's house that she's right there since the right. when Charlie Hill was half of a hill. He's absolutely right. Right, you're not going to do that, right. sir. Sandra, go. Uh, she's absolutely right because my sister have a house right here on Seaman. Well, you can look and see the harbor. Yeah, a Hill is prime. Cherry Hill is prime. Look, you got the hospital, you got the police station, you got the. Hey Doc, Come Doc, on. Doc, Doc Hill. Hey Doc. Go ahead, Bobby. Now, now keep in mind, we looking at two one two one seven, and the same layout they laid out. Why the two one two one seven is such a press community because of the quick proximity to downtown. Now we must understand. This is a master plan laid out by the true leaders of this city, and none of them look like us. 
when you talk about the Casey Foundation, when you talk about the Able, when you talk about Greater Baltimore, when you talk about the downtown partnership, downtown is dying. The oil is about ready to leave. Everything is shut down. There are issues. They must justify the city to get the tax base up because it does not pay the citizens that live in this city are decent wage, so the tax base always stays low. And 97% of your supervisors, managers, and directors do not live in the city of Baltimore. Why don't we have a toll tax and, and tax them for coming into the city to work to take our resources? Well, they don't pay city. Remember, they don't pay city taxes. We have they do not. They don't pay anything. Everybody, let me speak. We have an organization uh, that is celebrating 30 years of being in existence. Uh, I give it the name the Baltimore White Development Corporation. They are actually are, are legally known as the Baltimore Development Corporation. But they are hard pressed to be able to come and tell black communities what they have done or what they are doing for development in Baltimore City, which is a predominantly African American uh, residential neighborhood. They can't really tell us how many things they have done or are doing in the, a, the issue dealing with African Americans. Uh, and I call it the Baltimore White Development Corporation because they've been in yeah. existence for 30 years and haven't done a damn thing for us. We got to call yet, them. We we gotta call them for us. And folks, there's a House of Delegates election uh, and Senator election coming up next year. Uh, our congressman uh, has to be reelected. Uh, I think Baron Holland's election is coming up next year. And I said what needs to be said to all of these candidates. Uh, we need to give any of y'all votes. And I named some of those names. None of you should get our votes. If by the end of this year we're not getting a supermarket, you don't deserve any of our black folks' votes. That's true. That's right. Well, Dr. Paul, what I mean is when we're talking about, when we're talking about markets and, and no. so we're not talking about that. Somebody got, yeah. somebody got some of the forwards in the background. Hey, well, you know, well, we need to show them off. So again, Dallas? We need to call it 10 North, Doc. Go ahead. I'm muted in there. I, 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 I'm a community activist. My office is not at my office. My office is in the street. Go ahead, Doc. Exactly. You sound like a organization with no walls, where, pe where people are powered by the struggle, where organizations with no walls that can tackle all struggle, including COVID-19. The problem that I have is that when we're talking about COVID-19, we're talking about people Bobby, we need to. 19, and we're talking about markets. We're not talking about healthy foods that go in markets where we can ha actually help teach people how to support their healthy gut. Because everything survives within the gut. And that's where it starts to come up from. So when you go to, they have Trader Joe's and all these other um, markets that sell um, food with high in alkaline and stuff like that. And we don't have none of that in the city. We go to the market for my grandmother because there is no supermarket in Cherry Hill. We make it our business to make sure she has everything that she needs. And we have to go outside of Cherry Hill, either by Westside Shopping Center or all the way down Ritchie Highway to get her to a market. That is absurd. And you took a supermarket and you put a family dollar or dollar general there? What sense does that make? That's right. She's absolutely right to have a family dollar store there. And you know, what we have to understand, and we have to call names, we have to call people out. And I'm saying, members of the city council, how is it that only two of you that we know of, and we could be wrong, so you can call in and correct us, if we're wrong, but how is it that none of you, other than uh, Ramos and um, uh, what's the wife of the union president? Um, Sharon Green Middleton. Sharon Green Milton. To my knowledge, I've only heard and received communications from the two of them with reference to concerns dealing with food markets. So that means the rest of you city council people don't give a damn about your community. 25% living in a food desert, our senators, our delegates, our uh, state senators, you don't give a damn about 25% of the people living in a food desert, and then you're going to ask us, uh, and you're going to knock on our door and send us postcards about you're going for re-election? None of you have a right to be re-elected if we don't address uh, the problem of health 
in our Baltimore City school system, which you're hearing on this radio show, if you haven't addressed the problem of food deserts, 25% of the people in Baltimore City living in the food desert, and you're giving uh, tax incentives to multi-million dollar corporations to come downtown Baltimore, and you can't find uh, the need and the necessity to make certain our children are going to help in schools, you know, why should we even think about re-electing you? We should recall all of you and make you well, actually, to us that you had the responsibility to try to help us help ourselves. I don't know yeah, any of you right they don't care about us. We re-elected. They don't, they don't care about the black children in Baltimore City. Well, actually, Felicia Porter is fighting for a market to go out Cherry Hill. Um, she yeah, was doing that, yeah. and she's right. As a matter of fact, when we were going to meet me the other day, uh, uh, on the um, city school board meeting the other day, she told me, she was like, well, she didn't know any of this, and she asked me to send in all the questions and concerns that we had for San Felicia. Um, You know, they can't, if you don't know, you don't grow. And if you don't grow, we stand stagnated. And the problem mm-hmm. that we have is that, when, well, I don't even have a problem with Felicia Porter because anytime I reach out to her with any constituent concern out Cherry Hill, she jumps straight on it. Um, yeah, she do. I, maybe, she do. Yeah, maybe you should reach out to Felicia Porter. And, um, maybe Felicia and, oh, Porter needed to reach out to me. Well, yeah, well, well, <laughs> well, I'll, I'll make that effort. We sent we sent chief <laughs> communications to all the members of the city council. Uh, this message that we sent to the city council, to the health department the Baltimore City School System was CC to every member of the city council. Every member. They play the game that, you know, they, they're doing this, they're doing that. All I can say is the proof is in the pudding. What has this councilwoman or a councilman done, uh, and where's the proof of it? Is there a food market there? No. No, it's not one as of yet, but like I said, she is fighting to get one in Cherry Hill. But the problem that you have is that you have a lot of supermarkets that don't want to come into the inner city because of the yeah. problem that you have with theft. Um, so you, it, it, it's an uphill battle on both sides, just like at Mondawmin. Yeah. Well, just like at Mondawmin, they closed Target down because it was a high rate of theft. It's not that they wasn't making money. They was losing more money than they was actually coming in because people were coming in stealing. So, yeah, and at one point in time, shoppers were supposed to close down because of that. So when we talk about, we got to look at both sides of the spectrum, the ones that don't want to come in versus the ones who consider coming in, or maybe we need to create our own supermarkets in our own neighborhood. Uh, I'm, I'm going to tell you one supermarket did not close because of that. Uh, and that was Stop, Shop, and Save at the corner of North Monroe and West Pressman. Uh, one, it closed down because the ownership, the Baines' family, uh, had to close down eight of them uh, for business reasons, and it wasn't all because of theft. The reason that the store is not there today was the building was in such disrepair uh, it was in such terrible condition, it had to be torn down. So, you know, uh, the Baltimore City folks, I don't know of anyone that can show me a document that says that the company that shut down, and even with the Target situation, I went to the two public uh, uh, hearings that they had, Target never documented and said the reason we're closing mm-hmm. is because of theft. Mm-hmm. Wow. You can't, you can't find me a document anywhere that says that's what they said was a reason for their closing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We got yeah, to be something? careful with what the explanations that give. And I would not be surprised that it was the Baltimore White Development Corporation mm-hmm. that put these rumors out as yeah. to why they're not bringing in other businesses. They're not having problems in bringing businesses uh, to downtown Baltimore. Mm-hmm. They're bringing in some black businesses, and we're glad to hear it uh, in the uh, downtown section. Because some of the white businesses that are downtown know that if they're not going to make it, uh, no one else is. So they're trying to get more black folks to come and shop downtown because the white businesses are catching hold of heck financially. But nobody from the Baltimore White Development Corporation is telling you why they're, they're begging for blacks to come downtown because they're losing money. And we're saying yeah. their yeah. explanation and excuses for every reason. 
how is it 25% of the people in the city yeah. of Baltimore don't have food market? What is the life expectancy? Bubby's not on right now, but Bubby would tell you the life expectancy of zip code 21217, the Sandtown area, is age 70. The life expectancy for folks who are living uh, in Rolling Park is 84. Food is one of the issues that you have to deal with. The health department is not on here today. They don't give a damn about us. The no. Baltimore City Public School System Health and Safety don't give a damn about the children and their health and safety. The Baltimore City Council, two council uh, committees don't give a damn about us. Folks, if we don't begin to scream and holler about the injustices that are taking place in a predominantly black community, they're going to get what they're looking for. That is a gentrified Baltimore City where there will only be rich white folks and rich black folks and the poor, they're going to have you all out in Baltimore County. That's right. That's what that's what they're trying to do, Doc. That's exactly what they're trying to do. And Baltimore City, the black people are walking around sleep. They're not aware of what's getting ready to happen. What's happening? Folks, I, I don't know, but I'm, I'm checking my watch. I think my show should be ending about now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, it was, it was an excellent show, Doc. Okay. It is time to wrap up, folks. Thanks so much. Uh, Baltimore City, call me. Don't worry about it. Call names because you're telling the truth. Thank you so That's much. Right. Uh, I got to tell my Jason, thank you so much, my brother. Thank you, everyone, for uh, calling. Listen to next week's show. It'll be another hot issue. Another hot issue. And we're going to stay on, on this virus in the school system, Doc. Okay. We're not going to let them get away with uh, our children. Amen. I'm with you. God bless you all. All right, Rajon, you have a nice day, okay? Thank you, honey. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Doc. Right. Doc, thank you. Love all of you. Love you. Respect you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>